If your eyes are bigger than your wallet and you've got a hankering for some high-end watches, then you've come to the right place, because today I'm looking at 10 very affordable watches that will scratch a high-end itch. You can thank me later. If there's one way to make your watch cost more than a gold-plated house, it's by adding a chiming complication. A chime to watchmaking is what the word wedding is to literally anything. You can take the price and write it a fond farewell letter because it's going bye-bye. Although someone forgot to tell Christopher Ward this because the bell canto will give you some of that sweet, sweet ding for just about $4,000. How is such witchcraft possible, I hear you ask? You don't have to give up your firstborn in a blood oath, but you do have to accept that Christopher Ward has used some modern techniques to bring the cost down. See the lever that switches the hourly chime from on to off, made with fracking lasers. Now that's thinking with portals. When Maximilian Busa woke up one day and decided to change the face of watchmaking by creating some of the maddest watches on the planet, we were all like, yay! But then we realised the cost of such outrageousness was enough to buy your own planet, and we were all like, aww. In his heart, Max knew this wasn't right, knew deep down that he would have to make a watch for the people, and he did just that with the Mad One. Now, it's not officially an MBNF, but he's not here to stop me, so I'm calling it an MBNF. It is to the MBNF collection what the Moon Swatch is to the Speedmaster, that is, if Swatch had been bothered to make a nice watch. At around $3,500, it's significantly cheaper than any other MBNF, but it is no less batch. The Myota movement comes from humble beginnings, but with a sidewinding time display and an upended rotor that spins like a demon possessed ceiling fan, it's every bit the Max Booster fever dream it deserves to be. What I'm about to tell you is almost entirely unbelievable, but I swear it is absolutely true. A gentleman I know, a watch collector with things like open worked Royal Oaks in his collection, has recently purchased a watch you'd completely not expect. It's a tourbillon. That much I would believe of him. But it's one that costs less than a thousand dollars. In fact, shop around and you can purchase it for almost half of that again. It's the Agelosa Torbion series and, according to him, it's every bit as good as you could hope. And more. With a skeletonized twin barrel tourbillon, this watch should be troubling six-digit price tags were it made in Switzerland, but thanks to its Chinese origins, it can do all that for the price of a few tanks of fuel. It's all there and operational, absolutely none of it is stuck on, and even the quality is surprisingly good. The world is changing. This one personally speaks to me because I'm an absolute sucker for stuff that looks a bit bonkers. To you, the space one may remind you of a golf club or a car key, but to me it's a deep, deep itch scratch that I never thought could be. It's been quite the journey to now though. It is heavily inspired by Debitune's Dreamwatch 5, and so when the watch's Kickstarter page was taken down after hitting over a million dollars, that was the first thought. But no, turns out a watchmaker called Aragon took great umbrage with the Space One's prior name, Argon, a noble gas that inspired the space-like theme of the watch. Where that sucks but for the Space One gang, it served to benefit everyone else because the watch that got sold out on Kickstarter is back for sale again directly on Space One's site, starting at around $1,700 in steel up to $2,200 in titanium or forged carbon fibre. What I particularly like about the Space One is that creator Theo Ofre, a man who makes utterly insane watches I wouldn't be able to afford even if I sold my house, added a little splash of cool watchmaking to the Swiss Soprod calibre with a jump power complication. It's the little things. IWC's seven-day big pilot is, these days, a near $15,000 watch. It would have been a shorter war if they'd cost that much back then. Nevertheless, for anyone looking to channel their inner biggles, it seems the plane isn't the only big expense anymore. Enter Longine, the guy in the film who walks over after hearing your disappointment, looks around shiftily and says, I heard you were looking for a pilot's watch. Now, instead of selling you a small baggie of concrete dust, Longine actually has a totally decent pilot's watch to offer. And it's a chronograph. 
Based on a 1930s watch that totally exists, the big eye has the same posture as that one guy in the gym that walks with really stiff arms, because at 41mm across and 14.5mm thick, it is a big boy. But that's the point. Everything from the pushes to the chronograph minutes is a slab of sizzling prime rib, but at brisket prices, costing a quarter of the IWC. Oh hello, I didn't see you there. I was too busy enjoying all this fantastic new channel merch, and you can too. So if you want to be as cool as me, or perhaps even cooler, check it out just below the video. Thanks very much. Okay, so maybe for you the mad one at $3,500 still isn't affordable enough, but you still have an unquenchable thirst for some Mad Max Booser watchmaking. Well, I'm afraid you won't get anything from the man himself, but that doesn't mean it's game over, because Radcliffe's Le Dome has got you covered. At around $600, you get a Miyota movement, like the Mad Ones, but actually slightly better, and a dial display that channels the Legacy Machine LM101, but without costing as much as a BMW. Hours and minutes are separated into two rotating domes, with a third dome cowling the open heart balance. This all sits under a fourth dome, the sapphire crystal itself, hence the name Le Dome. It's a bit like calling your dog paws, but whatever. Filling the gaps between the array of domes is a guilloche effect pattern, available in a suite of different colours including a smoky fumé style. The whole thing is just 40mm across, and even with the domed crystal, is a comfortable, unobtrusive wear. All surprisingly sensible for a watch that offers a cut price asylum experience. If you've ever looked at an Orverk with its complex array of twiddly bits and compiled a mental list of people you'd happily push into the road to have one, then hopefully I've got something that will keep you out of prison just a little bit longer. This is the Atawak Tarantula, and despite sounding more like a jungle hazard than a watch, it's got all the right ingredients to satiate basically any cash-strapped Orverk fan. Orverk are known for their incredibly complex satellite displays, combining digital hours with analogue minutes in a helter-skelter of watchmaking wizardry. Well, like the kid who spoils the magician's tricks, Atawak have figured out how it was done, and turns out it wasn't that hard after all. Strap three pointers to the hour feed of a standard movement, give the freely rotating hour cube a little nudge once per rotation, and BAM! You're going to have yourself a brain-melting time. For around $2,200, mere cents on the dollar compared to the original, it's more insanity for the money than owning a pet tiger. Watches with meteorite dials are just about as rare as the meteorites themselves, and so for fans of the great attic in the sky, owning a piece in a watch is a dream as unlikely as stepping foot into the great unknown. It actually turns out, however, that there are like 500 meteorites slapping Earth about every single year, so the rarity of the stuff has been quite dramatically overplayed. Selton knows this, and that's why the Series 00 not only has a meteorite dial, it's also just $699. So what's actually going on here is that basically all the watches with meteorite dials sourced their space rock from the same meteorite, and that meteorite is running out. But it's completely bypassed these guys that there are plenty of other meteorites to choose from. You can literally get slices of meteorite online for a few hundred dollars. Anyway, Selton have packaged up this very pretty piece of interstellar salami with a day-night indicator that also makes use of million-year-old metal, plus a pair of heat-blued pontiff hands that stick two fingers up to all the other meteorite dial watches that cost the Earth and everything on it. The very highest end of high-end watchmaking is a bit like the Uncanny Valley. Just a little outside of the most expensive watches are the weird and wacky creations that only a mother could love, but as the scale reaches terminal expenditure, it all starts to get rather ordinary again. That's because at this level, it's not about the what, and more the how. How a simple watch is made, when poised at the high end, can turn a $500 three-hander into a $500,000 three-hander, and the Afion 786 Velos is here trying to split the difference. So you won't see a normal dial, you'll see a beautifully guilloche dial. And you won't see normal lugs, but delicious teardropped soldered ones. And you won't see a standard movement, but an expertly handcrafted calibre with top quality finishing and design. 
Well, if the watch cost half a million dollars, you might, but this one only costs four thousand dollars, because there is no guilloche, soldering or handcrafting, because the watch is basically a showcase of the capabilities of a machine. Yep, the watchmaker's name here is unit number 34790, and whilst that sounds terrifying, for most of us it means we simply don't have to stick to watches that look like a submariner anymore. To bring this video back full circle, we end up where we began at Christopher Ward. This time the pricey watch that they're pulling no punches on is actually multiple watches, because they're going after the Royal Oak, Ingenieur, Defy Skyline, Antarctic, and many others all in one go. This is the 12, and it starts at just $1,100. With more facets than the plot of West Wing, the 12's case is a masterclass on what you can achieve for a low budget if you really try. Kudos to Christopher Ward because between this and the Bel Canto, they're really pulling the pants down on some of the big prices other brands charge. There's steel and titanium on offer, with the latter being slightly thinner and slightly more expensive, and the choice of a metal bracelet or a rubber strap. All the watches come with a generous serving of smug satisfaction for bypassing the bullshit that lingers around this particular genre of watches. And that bit's priceless. Got a bargain alternative to a mega money watch? Share it with me in the comments below. Please also like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Still here? Watch this video next.